so today students let us continue with lesson number 1 adaptations and classifications uh, now we shall study adaptations in animals forest and grassland animals desert animals snowy animals adaptations in aerial animals adaptations in reptiles adaptations for food in animals adaptations for blending with the surroundings classification of living organisms by normal nomenclature by carl linnaeus now have you observed some differences between the terrestrial and aquatic animals as compared to terrestrial animals the skin and the body shape of aquatic animals is different fishes have scales on the skin and fins on the body their body shape tapers towards both ends and is like a spindle fishes breathe with the gills instead of the nose their eyes have transparent lids they have air bladders within their body to help them to float now if you observe the bodies of the frog the duck and the tortoise let's answer these questions of what use are the legs to these animals now in case of the frog on the land they use the legs for jumping whereas in water they use them for swimming like the oars in case of the duck also they use for walking on the land and swimming uh, in water the tortoise also creeps on the uh, land and swims in the water second question what helps the frogs to breathe under water so the skin helps the frogs to breathe under water question number 3 of what use are the long and the hind legs of the frog the hind legs are used for jumping and swimming in water it uses them like the oars then why does a duck get wet in the water it doesn't get wet because there is an oily layer on its feathers okay now let us begin let us see what how the frog and the duck have web toes and they can use them like their oars water flows off the waxy feathers of the birds like the duck and the water hen webbed toes are slippery smooth skin and a triangular head helps the frogs to swim easily through the water they can live on land as well as in water due to their ability to breathe through the skin in water and using the nose and lungs on the land to breathe the typical colors of the frog's back help it to hide among the grasses this is called as camouflage so that it can protect itself from the predators you can make a list of some of the other amphibians you know and study their adaptations now let us study how animals have adapted themselves in forest and grasslands <coughs> now carnivorous animals like the dogs wild dog fox tiger and lion have strong legs to run fast and capture their prey they have claws and canine teeth that are sharp and pointed now what is the function of such teeth yeah they are used to tear the flesh apart the tigers have padded <coughs> paws this enables them to silently stalk their prey and capture it easily stalk means to follow them quietly so that they can catch their prey easily the eyes of the predatory carnivores are located in the front of the head this helps them to stop their prey from sorry to spot their prey from a long distance now let us go to the herbivore animals the herbivore animals 
the eyes are below the forehead on either side of the head this gives them a wide angle vision which helps them to protect them from the predators their legs are long and tapering with strong hooves which enables them to run fast taking long leaps long jumps jumps their long and freely moving ears can receive sounds from long distances and different directions deer and black bucks have colors that merge with the surroundings so this is known as camouflage again here they can protect themselves from their predators their teeth are strong and chewing tough plant material because they are herbivores okay so their teeth are very strong now let us see this uh, pictures here in the next slide here you can see the lion which is a carnivore and the black buck or the deer antelope it is uh, the herbivorous animals so i have already told you the differences among those two so you can read it later you can see them so now let's shift to adaptations in desert animals so now you must have seen a camel yes it's a very famous animal of the desert it is called as the ship of the desert deserts are characterized by severe scarcity of water scarcity means there's less water there hence desert animals have thick skin to to prevent the loss of water from the body similarly their legs are long with flat and cushioned soles so you can see the camel there okay its legs are long uh, with flat and cushioned soles similarly the nostrils the nostrils are protected by folds of the skin long nostrils the eyelashes are long and thick so that the sand does not enter the eyes and the nose then we have examples here of the rats the snakes the spiders the lizard lizards living in the deserts in deep burrows during the daytime and are active at night now here you can see the slide the snake the rat and the spider also they are camouflaged here right okay so they can hide themselves from the predators so i hope you all have understood till here the adaptations of the desert animals now let us come continue with the adaptation in animals of snowy regions now from the internet we can download some images of the animals like the yak the polar bear the white fox the silver fox the mountain goat the siberian husky dog and a snow lizard now in the slide you can see the uh, snow leopard and the husky dog now how are these animals adapted to the snowy regions mostly all of them have a white or a silver body color okay thick hair on their skin are typical characteristics typical characteristics of the animals of the snowy region they huddle together in groups to keep themselves warm so that there is less loss of heat then they have webbed feet and they streamline their body while swimming which makes them good swimmers for example the penguins you all know about the penguins okay now here there are some examples like the yak the polar bear the white fox silver fox mountain goat siberian husky dog and the snow leopard which we have seen just now now let us see how the aerial animals have adapted themselves did you observe the difference in the vehicles on the road and the aeroplanes okay the major difference is the shape of the vehicles and the aeroplanes the spindle shaped body of the birds also minimizes the resistance of air while flying while hollow bones a body covering of feathers and modification of four legs into wings their body is light in weight and adapted for flying now this spindle shaped body it cuts the air and the bird flies it minimizes the resistance resistance means opposition opposes the air and it moves forward then the four legs are modified into wings which helps them to fly now there are air sacs in their body 
which increases the buoyancy buoyancy means the float they can float in the air they can fly in the air okay now the hollow bones also makes their body light in weight so it helps in adaptation to the aerial mode of life now <clears throat> observe the various kinds of birds and insects in your area now let us go further how reptiles have adapted themselves to the surroundings so if you observe the reptiles they are animals with a special purpose okay animals like the house lizard the garden lizard the crocodile use their muscles for creeping how do they move they creep similarly they show adaptations in skin soles of the feet body color for example the house lizard and the monitor lizard have clawed toes and thin soles where the snakes have scaly skin okay so i hope uh, you have understood uh, the adaptations in reptiles now let us see how the animals adapt themselves for the food so let us categorize the animals into two different types carnivores and herbivores <clears throat> different types of adaptations are seen in the process of feeding this we shall discuss later in the chapter on nutrition but still i would like to show you a slide here where you can see the shape of the beaks of the different birds according to the food they eat in case of a woodpecker it's very hard and long and because it has to peck the wood similarly if you see the sparrow or the crow since they pick up the grain see how the beak is shaped yes okay now let us go further to uh, complete this chart from your own observations here the adaptation the animal and the use of adaptation in case of sharp teeth for example we can say lion and tiger uh, what is it used for sharp teeth to tear the flesh then long and pointed beak in case of kingfisher and crane to catch fish short beak for example sparrow and crow to pick up grains and seeds long and sticky tongue in case of a frog to catch its insect then the long neck for example ostrich and great indian bustard to spot the predators from far away in the wild now adaptation for blending with the surroundings we cannot easily spot colorful butterflies lizards and grasshoppers they get camouflage amongst grasses parts of plants like the stem leaves flowers etc that is because that is because their colors blend with those in the surroundings now in the slide you can see here there is a fish here but it is blended so well with the sand there that you cannot easily spot it similarly there is a spider here with a spider which is blended with the surroundings you cannot easily uh, detect it so that it protects itself now this is called as camouflage <coughs> changes that take place in the various organs and life processes of organisms that enable them to live feed reproduce to perpetuate themselves and to protect themselves from their enemies in specific surroundings depending upon the habitat and its geographical conditions are called as adaptations so we have seen the definition of adaptation is not a sudden process it is a gradual and continuous differences in structure and appearance of the present day animals and animals of thousands of years ago are adaptations that occurred according to prevailing conditions it is our duty to conserve this diversity